everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Sitting beside me today is the brand new Land Rover Defender. So first of all, we're going to hook up a trailer to see how the Defender tows and then we're heading off road. We've already got her a bit dirty and we'll see if the Defender truly lives up to its name. We're kicking it off with the walk around. So our Defender today is powered by the P400 power plant. That means what we have here is a three liter inline six turbocharged engine, but it's not that simple. It's also paired to a 48 volt mild hybrid system. Now the mild hybrid system helps to run an electric supercharger. So there is a ton of technology under this hood and I can't wait to get out there on the road. Now what are the numbers? Well, 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque made it to an eight speed automatic. Now, when I opened this hood, I actually noticed a couple of things and it's not often these days that I open a hood and things look different, but under the Land Rover, things are different. First of all, what you have to notice are these shock tower mounts. The shocks come so high in this vehicle because they have those airbags and because having your mounts up here allow the vehicle to be lifted up taller. But to accommodate for those, there's no battery underneath this hood. Right away, I'm like, well, where is the battery? Usually it's easy to get to. Land Rover does give you a workaround. They actually put positive and negative posts right up here under these little plastic covers. So you can still, you know, charge your battery, which is obviously hidden down below. Now walking around this Defender, um, you know what? They definitely went for the retro styling, but totally upgraded. And I didn't love it at first. The more I have it and live with it, it is growing on me. I don't hate the way it looks. That means we get this matte graphic hood up here. You also get these fake, uh, you know, checker plate steps. Now on the old Defenders, these were flat fenders that people did step on. So this is kind of a little homage to that, but no, you don't want to be stepping up here on the hood of your brand new Defender. Um, so I mentioned that package. That also brings along this beast right here. Yes, that is a snorkel and it's part of the package. It's going to allow you to ford up to 35 inches of water. Now, you don't actually need this for 35 inches of water because this is way taller than that, but uh, it's important that you're getting clean air from up here because this is going to make sure you don't get too much dust into the engine too, plus you're not bringing in water. So as we move back here, the other thing you'll see from the adventure package, you get a big beefy roof rack up here for strapping on ladders or whatever you might have. I would be remiss now if I didn't mention the tires. So here in our model today, we just have a set of Michelin Latitudes, not off-road tires whatsoever, not even all terrains. Um, it's kind of weird to me that you're gonna sell me a package with a snorkel and then not automatically upgrade the tires to something a little beefier, but uh, I think that speaks to the type of people Land Rover know are gonna be buying this Defender. So this is gonna limit us today with the kind of off-roading we're gonna do, but don't worry, we'll still get her dirty. Now let's swing around to the back. There's a lot back here to talk about. So this does have a big old swing gate, opens up like this. And the first thing I love about this rear is this plastic material that is on the floor in the back of the seats. It's really hard, it has great grip to it. And that's something that if you get dirty, it's gonna be easy to clean. Back here actually feels very utilitarian. Then you also have these nets on either side. That's gonna help you to secure whatever cargo you might have. There's a whole bunch of little hooks here. There's a 12 volt outlet back here. So Land Rover really planned for you to be using the back here, again, when you're out maybe on the trail or hiking, something like that. And then the other thing I have to show you, there's actually a little button panel right here and you can raise or lower just the rear end of the Defender. Why you might ask? Well if you're loading in whatever you might be loading, groceries, case of beer, lumber, whatever, having a lower step in height is very important. One other use for this right here, you could actually use it to hook up a trailer, back up and then raise up the back end to connect that hitch ball right into the coupler. Now one last thing I want to talk about at the rear end are the Safari windows here on the Defender. This is something Land Rover has done for years and years. I actually have memories of being a little kid and dad bringing home a Land Rover Discovery he was testing and being so excited to sit in the back and look out of those Safari windows. So I don't know maybe it's a little silly thing but those are the types of little kind of nostalgic things Land Rover has done here to, to really pay homage to the tradition of the Defender. So uh, now we're gonna get out there and tow a big old trailer so let's see how it does. 
time to back into our trailer and first I should tell you I would drop the air suspension into access height so that means I know that my hitch ball will clear now here's the cameras and there are a couple headings underneath so we'll go over to the towing heading and you can see it gives you that dynamic guideline for your hitch ball now we can go ahead and back in and it allows us to put it right underneath the pin like that and now the cool thing is I should be able to use the air suspension to now raise that up and uh, lock up that trailer so now let's go see where that hitch ended up oh yes perfect you see that just underneath so now I can try my other theory here which is that we can open up the back and using our raise air suspension button which you can see right in there it's a little dark we should be able to bring this up. Oh, sorry, that's down. Here's up. Let's see how she goes. Boom! <laughs> Beautifully done, Defender. Love that air suspension. Okay, folks, time to prepare the trailer. We're going to do 5,000 pounds with the Defender today. So one of those blocks has got to come off. Right now it's at seven. So one block off and we'll get towing. We're on the move now with the trailer. First things first, I want to show you some of the pretty neat trailering systems here in the infotainment system. So you can see there, you go towing and trailers. And then, you can actually set up your specific trailer. So let's go ahead and add. There's all your options. Uh, we're pretty much a car carrier. Ask your number of axles. We got twin axles. And then it wants your dimensions in inches. Well, we're 20 feet long. How many inches is 20 feet? 240. There you go. Good thing I'm smart. Smarter than me. Uh, and then width-wise, we're eight feet. So what's eight feet in inches? Uh, 96. All right. One of us has got to be a numbers guy, right? And boom, there you go. So now it says there, detecting trailer. So it actually detects your trailer back there. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing once it detects your trailer, but it knows it's there. Now this is cool though. Guys, this is at full speed. There's very few vehicles while moving at speed that let you see that camera consistently, but the Defender does. And you get two views. You get that view, and you also get this side view. And the cool thing about this side view is that is actually wider than the mirror is. So if you look in the mirror and then look at the camera, the camera's gonna offer you a better view down the side of your trailer, which is pretty cool. All right, Dad, so you got your window open, the intake's right there. Let's hit the throttle and let's listen. That really sucks the air in. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to translate, but man, that intake makes a lot of noise. You really hear it working right there by your ear. <laughs> yeah. So now you've seen the towing tech in the infotainment system, but there's other things you should know about towing systems here. So there's no selectable tow haul mode, and there is no trailer brake controller available on the Defender, so you can't even get one if you want one. Okay, Dad, but here comes a good test. We're just merging onto our highway section. So let's put your foot into it. Whoa, the power feels really good. It actually sounds all right too. Yeah, considering it's a straight six, it's got a decent exhaust note. Yeah, absolutely. So turbocharged and supercharged. So how does that feel? When you do put your foot into it, do you feel the lag? No, 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 absolutely not. That certainly solves the issue. I mean, the supercharger is actually meant to give you as much torque as you can get at low speed. Mm -hmm because it's, uh, it's feeding the turbo where the turbo isn't spinning if you're, I think it actually said at three kilometers an hour or lower. Correct. So in other words, you're pecking through rocks off road. Mm -hmm. So, but in just general driving, it gives it a bit of a kick in the pants. Yeah, and it feels really good even with the weight on. And then dynamically, our model today has the air suspension. And not only did the air suspension help me when I was hooking up, but then it auto leveled in the back end. The whole rig is sitting nice and flat. Maybe a little soft, just a little bit, but again, you're driving, what do you feel? Well, I know what you're saying, soft, because there's just a little bit of rocking um, side to side. However, it, it firms right up. It, it barely, like, I mean, it does that little bit of side to side, and then you realize that you're hitting this sort of firm 
part in that suspension sure. in the air. And of course, remembering, of course, we've got 5,000 pounds on here right now. So actually, it's a lot better than I thought it would be. I was really worried about it because of the kind of tall uh, nature of the vehicle and the shorter wheelbase, but uh, surprisingly, it's not bad at all. Yeah, you know what? Again, from over here, it feels really nice too. And, and just the numbers are higher than I expected too, you know, to, to Defender, uh, I don't know how many people are really looking to tow with their Defenders, but you know, seven to 8,000 pounds, that's a serious load. I think it's suggesting too that, yeah, it's not so much, you know, people always do this, well, it's a serious off-roader. No, it's more of a, an overlander. Mm -hmm. So yeah, towing is gonna be important with this vehicle, which, really kind of makes me wonder about the integrated trailer brake controller. Yeah, fair, why why it's not here. And actually, your point about the Overlander is a good one, because I actually totally agree with you. However, there's something that's gonna be a bit of an Achilles heel there, and it's payload. Let me show you the door jam sticker. So yes, not even 900 pounds of payload. Now, with our 5,000 pound trailer, putting 10% tongue weight onto the vehicle, that's 500 pounds, and then Dad and I up here, we're overloading this thing right now, absolutely. It doesn't feel like it whatsoever, it's doing a beautiful job, but you always have to note that payload number, and uh, you know what, it might change if you get a less contented model, but something to be aware of. We gotta talk about this interior, because it's certainly different from anything out there on the market. Um, Land Rover has this really kind of British understated thing going on. I feel like they always go for less is more, less buttons, less controls, and I think it comes together really nice. I think it is luxurious. I love this big thick grab handle right here that runs all the way along the dash. Great for the passenger. There's this cool little cubby up here in front of you. You can even stash things behind the screen. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm a fan. And then sure, it's luxurious, but there's these little things that make it utilitarian, such as the exposed bolt heads in the door. You see some of those down here on the stack. So they're still trying to give you that rugged feel. I mean, I don't think the Defender's really all that rugged anymore, but at least they're trying to, you know, play it up a little bit. Without a doubt, because most people that are gonna buy a Defender are gonna buy it based on what's in here. True. And, and whether or not it goes with their outfit. <laughs> Let's talk pricing now. I only have a digital version of the build sheet, so I'll throw it up right here. So first of all, base price on this Defender 110 SE here in Canada is $76,000. We have a couple options on our Defender today. The comfort and convenience pack, driver assist pack, cold climate package. The one I want to show you there is right there, the Explorer pack. And I'm sorry, I think in the walk around I called it the Adventure Pack. It's actually the Explorer Pack. Uh, that costs $6,000 Canadian. Now Land Rover offers a couple of these different packages which bring along a whole bunch of accessories straight from the factory. Now you can see all of the different standard features here. Finally bringing us to a total price here in Canada of $90,805. And for our US friends, I'll throw the price up on screen right here. Okay, 5,000 pound trailer on the back, folks. And we're gonna do a zero to 60 run out here. I'm really curious how this stacks up to trucks and I think it's gonna be good because it feels powerful. So wait for the app to reset, find the GPS. Ready for the race, hit it. Oh, <laughs> it feels good. And we should mention now we are in sport mode. No tow haul mode, but we're in sport. Oh boy, she's pulling strong. I doubt, I thought that's a 12.4 0 to 60 with 5,000 pounds on the back. That's dang impressive. And now you can see how it stacks up to all the trucks we've tested with 5,000 pounds on the leaderboard. There's some super cool cameras here in the Defender. Let me show you. So when you're on road and you have to be going less than 10 kilometers an hour, you're able to hit these corner buttons and it actually brings up that super cool 3D Defender. Uh, that's super neat. If you go to the side, it should zoom in right down the side of the vehicle. And right here, I'm actually gonna pull off the road into our parking lot. And this is when I think this feature would be handy 
when you're moving at slow speeds and you're pulling in somewhere. Look at that, the brake lights even come on when I touch the brakes. That is so neat. And then you can touch these cameras on the vehicle and that's showing you the front corners, the front center, the rear center. If I wanna look down the left side or that weird three quarter front view, I can get that. And again, we're entering our gate right here. So you can see as I go through the gate, it should show them. <laughs> it's the perspective is really strange though so uh, I think I'll still just watch the road but that's cool and now there's one other thing I'll hit the off-road button here and now you can also see this camera right here this is showing you what's underneath the vehicle so as we roll it's showing you what's down there and then if I stop you can see the wheels also turn showing you exactly where your wheels go this thing just has a ton of super cool views there's more great information down here as well. If you hit the 4x4i button, it will actually give you information on each one of the individual drive modes. You can see it here. Now this is incredibly clever to me because these are the types of things that a lot of the times the manufacturers don't explain and then someone gets in the vehicle and sure you can understand that mud and ruts is for mud and ruts but you don't actually know what the vehicle is doing. So if you intimately understand what it is doing you can then drive it more effectively and uh, giving you all of this information just straight up it makes so much sense to me. So kudos to Landover for that as well and I wish more brands would do things like this. Um, there are more owner's manuals being incorporated into the screens these days but I still don't see a lot of this stuff when it comes to off-road so why not just have that explainer right there. Okay everybody time to test the wade sensing here in the Defender and yes we're just gonna drive into the lake. We actually didn't have enough water on our trails right now believe it or not so uh, I just want to see how it works. So let's just go ahead and creep into the lake and just see once it tells me where the water is. So you can see it also shows the angle of the vehicle which is pretty cool. Nothing yet. Come on Wade Sensing. There it is! There it is! It just showed up. So now it's showing you exactly the level of the water on the vehicle and what's really cool is it's showing you the angle of the vehicle too so you can see that I'm really nose down that is really cool and do I look very deep yeah you're just at the bottom of the door sill okay well that's about enough I don't need to drive into the lake to prove anything but you can see it coming up there I still got a little more how cool is that a lot of the times for us, if we want to find out if a hole is too deep, we get a rock or a big stick and throw it in there. This is a much more slick system than a big stick. <laughs> Very cool. Now it's time for the exciting stuff, everybody. We're going off-road here in the Defender. But before I tell you how it is off-road, we need to have a little bit more of a discussion about the name Defender and kind of what that image conjures up and how it's changed over the years. And uh, for that, I'll throw it to Dad. I just wanted to say that coming out here today with this Defender, I had a lot of really mixed feelings. First of all, I had the feeling, like a lot of people, that I know this vehicle. But the truth of the matter is, very few of us know what a Land Rover is, other than what we've seen in Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, or on Tarzan movies, or if you're a little younger, maybe in uh, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider. And the fact is, unlike big three pickup trucks, when I climb into one, I can actually tell you that I've been in every one of those generations going six generations back. I got real background. With this thing, I don't. However, I realized that I had thought I knew what a Land Rover should be. And I thought particularly what a Defender should be because this is the military version. So coming into this truck, I was ready to be super disappointed because I looked at it and I went, it's a poofy mall crawler. So once I got past that and realized that, you know what, I really don't know that much about Land Rovers. We just don't get them here that often. We don't cover them. So I tried to wipe my mind and start testing it as I would a vehicle that I'd never seen before and knew nothing about. And on that basis, Slowly as the day went on, I kept being surprised and I kept being more impressed till at the end of the day, I'd honestly say this is a very competent off-roader that also has a really plush side, which is certainly going to appeal to a lot of people. So I don't expect to see as many of these on the trail as Jeeps, but I think this definitely has a place in the market. 
So we didn't run either of our trails. We didn't do the left hook or the hydro line just because I was a little worried about these tires. We came over here to another local trail and uh, this one's got, it's not hard, but it's got some rocks. It's got quite a few uh, articulation sections and actually more mud than we expected, more water than we expected. And so far, I'm gonna give the tires kudos. They're doing better than they look. And part of that is the Defender. So the Defender has off-road driving modes. Uh, that's basically the only way you can control the 4x4 system. There's no, you know, four high setting, two high setting, none of that. You can put it into low or you can use the off-road driving modes. So we actually have it in mud and ruts mode right now. And one of the things <laughs> you notice right away is how smoothly the Defender suddenly takes off. There's absolutely zero wheel spin as you take off. And then even as you get into one of these little mud holes, if you kind of give it a little bit of throttle, it doesn't suddenly just start spinning the tires like crazy. It feels like it's really intelligently giving you just the right amount of power to make sure you still have traction. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think Dad and I both had the same sense so far. We were both ready to be disappointed by this Defender off-road, and so far it's impressive. Now next, the sight lines, just like a Jeep Wrangler. Big, tall seating position here. I'm looking down on all my corners. You really feel like you have a commanding view of this entire vehicle around you. Um, one of the downsides is I bump up these rocks about the air suspension. I can feel the articulation. I can really feel it working when you hit stuff, but it gets quite a bit stiffer at, uh, at full lift. It's one of the kind of downsides of airbags is once you max out that airbag, it's gonna inevitably be just a little bit stiffer. So at, uh, at full off-road height, yeah, it's a, it's a little rough here. This is not a high speeder. There's no doubt about that. But you know what? The steering is nice and loose. Uh, it doesn't, you know, kick back out of your hands, anything crazy. It's it's just obvious after doing this for a bit that this off-road, uh, these off-road conditions were all considered and they were all, you know, baked right into this Defender's DNA. And, you know, Land Rover wanted to make sure it could still be legit. So far, it feels like it. So that is it for our day with the Defender, everybody. Now, on road, Land Rover did everything right here. This Defender is just a luxurious, comfortable, technology filled SUV. And then honestly, we were ready to be disappointed off road, but we weren't. It's obvious that Land Rover spent just as much time on off road development as they did on road. And although I don't think you're gonna see a lot of Defenders on the trail, it's good to know that the Defender can still hack it on some pretty tough, challenging trails. So everybody, like I said, that's it for this one. Why don't you go below, leave us a comment, let us know what you think of this Defender, and let me say here, thank you so much to all of our members, because yes, I can afford a new shirt. If you wanna become a Truck King member, go below right now and hit the Join button. We would appreciate it. Of course, do not forget to hit the Subscribe button as well, and then come right back here to the Truck King YouTube channel to see what we are testing next. See ya.